We realized the state of Louisiana was quite anxious to have us set up in their state. Louisiana, in the middle of the state, had all the right chemical trade, it had the, the access to shipping ports. So that, that saves a lot of time because, again, we're trying to get to first mover, let, let's get this done quickly. The, uh, the U.S. DOD award actually helps us to move quicker, and we were on a fast track regardless, but yes, and the state stepped up with uh, $20 million in incentives. Talking Rare Earth today with Yuko and Pat. And my first question, midstream. We hear a lot about that term. Could you explain a little bit how that fits in the overall rare earth supply chain? Yeah, great question. Midstream is the part of the supply chain where you're taking the rare earth concentrate that comes out of the earth and it needs to be processed into something that's usable. And, um, you know, the, the Japanese call it the seeds of technology. It's where you need rare earth oxides that are actually then used to produce metals and alloys that go into permanent magnets. But 85% of refining, almost 90% of refining of these critical rare earth uh, minerals, it occurs in China. And so when you're looking at risk mitigating supply chains, developing for the Western world, um, you know, some sustainability of, of supply, you've got to start with refining. And that's the mid-market. That's the part that China has done a really good job of capturing and getting a grip on the market. It's that mid-market. So we're focused on refining in that mid-market. Okay, yeah. And I mean, if one has any doubt on how, just how critical this is, um, the grant that you received this week from the US Department of Defense, that definitely uh, is a great vote of confidence and just shows how important that is in the US supply chain. Absolutely. It, it, it's not only a vote of confidence, it's, it's credibility. You know, the U.S. is looking to uh, develop a supply chain that's risk mitigated. It's for, it's for commercial reasons, um, electric vehicles, wind energy, uh, which are, are crucial and important. And it's also for uh, defense and security reasons, you know, weapon systems, missile guiding systems, F-35 fighters. Uh, you've got to have an independent development. And uh, the U.S. Department of Defense has... Um, they started conversations with UCOR about a year ago and they really wanted to learn more about our technology called Rapid SX, what we were doing in Kingston, Ontario, Canada at our commercial development plant. And once they understood the makeup of what we were doing, they said, you know what, this is something we really need to get behind because we need innovative solutions. We need innovative solutions that can get to commercial fortitude. And, and so it was a real, um, again, vote of confidence, yes, but, but credibility. It's like they studied, we had a lot of conversations, they liked what they saw dealing with people at the Pentagon, and uh, that's how the award eventually came about. It was a request for solutions that uh, manifested in November of uh, 22, and in that request for solution was who has the most innovative approach to get this refining accomplished for uh, a Western world and uh, and we were a recipient. We, we won the award based on all the work we have done the last couple of years. So certainly excited to get started and, and do what we need to do for the U.S. Department of Defense. Yeah, and I think that's great news for you core shareholders and we now already touched base on two use cases, EV and defense. What are the other cases that Rare Earth is being uh, used for? Well, uh, you know, it, it's, um, we've got a, we, we call it a once in a generation opportunity where we're converting, um, you know, it, it's CO2 reduction really at the end of the day. So things like wind energy, um, um, solar panels, electric vehicles, all about CO2 reduction. Uh, you've got things like smartphones that you probably have on you right now. They're rare to go into smartphones. Um, on the defense side, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the importance in defense is quite frankly that the, the defense or the, the, the weapon systems, uh, if, if they're lighter weight, uh, and they're made lighter weight by permanent magnets that are the most efficient means of converting electrical energy into mechanical energy. And if weapon systems are lighter weight, you can carry more explosives. That sounds a little grim and bizarre perhaps, but uh, at the end of the day, converting electrical energy into mechanical energy at this point in the 21st century is, is key, it's fundamental, and, the, and the, the most efficient way to do that is with rare earth permanent magnets that require rare earth to make it happen. So many, many applications. Uh, uh, commercial, uh, uh, drones, uh, you name it. Yeah, and just to bring an example here of how critical weight is, if we look at the Joby Aviation with their S4 in the EV2 space, they made a big announcement like two weeks ago that they've been able to cut back on uh, some of the weight within the internal system by four kilogram. Uh, so that's how critical it is. Uh, every kilo that you cut back adds range. So also in this flying taxi space, 
uh, we're definitely going to see a lot of rare earth being implemented in order to cap back on weight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in the, in the uh, everyone hears about electric vehicles, and then we, we talk about the battery and and uh, you know how efficient the battery is and how far the range will be for the car. Well, quite frankly, you can have the best battery in the world, but unless you have a motor, an electric motor that's driven by permanent magnets that really convert that electrical energy into mechanical energy, you're not going to get the range. You're not going to get what you need. So it's, it's, the, it's it light weighting and it's very efficient uh, at high temperatures in particular uh, to do what needs to get done. So yeah, crucial to this point in the 21st century um, with a, an energy transition upon us. And um, you know, I, I think at UCOR we, um, we talk about, you know, markets don't, uh, markets don't buy anything, customers buy things. And what customers out there need these products at the end of the day to actually get things done. And that's what the U.S. Department of Defense is doing. We, we have customers, we have commerce. Uh, we need to make sure we have the right support systems in the Western world to be able to deliver. And, and again, back to the full vote of confidence that we've had uh, from the U.S. DOD just recently. Pat, I have a quick follow-up question on that one, perhaps. Perhaps you can sketch out what kind of increase in demand we're expecting heading into the future uh, for these rare earth materials. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, the... Um, in 2020, and that's back three years ago, you had about three billion dollars of rare earth oxides that were um, required in the world. That number will be 30 billion by the end of the decade. So by 2030, you're at 30 billion. So a tenfold growth in rare earth oxides. When you look at the uh, ex-China market, it's about half of that, 16 billion dollars of rare earth oxides by the end of the decade. That is an ex-China market. Uh, and at Ucor, we're looking to uh, go after 20 percent of that market. So it's it's uh, you know it, it's it's a big uh, goal, but we have um, uh, we've already announced uh, you know that we have a first strategic metals complex coming together in uh, Louisiana, uh, Alexander, Louisiana's location. We have an eighty thousand square foot uh, building there, and that's where we'll be building a uh, an eventual seventy five hundred ton processing plant that achieves some of that uh, that market of the the fifteen sixteen billion dollar ex-China market by the end of the decade. And, and that's the important thing about the DOD as well, is that the award was um, uh, based on, okay, this is innovative, you've got great tech, let's run a campaign, let's run thousands of hours, let's prove out everything that you've said you've done, let's let the DOD understand it. And then there's an add-on component. The add-on component is when you get through phase one, which is a $4 million US award, then we'll move to phase two. And phase two is the opportunity to then say, with the DOD, because it's an open-ended contract, which is perfect, they see the proof, they see what we're doing, then they go, okay, now let's move to commercial. So the award then becomes even a bigger opportunity to get to commercial, because that's that's what's needed at the end of the day. It's not to do some testing in, in a lab or in a commercial demo facility, it's actually get to commercial production. And so this, this award is open-ended with that opportunity to get to full commercial production, which is, it's great. It's what the Western world needs. And I mean, it's good to see talking about uh, the, the commercial grades uh, that you already have the pilot plan on uh, kind of commercial production scale in uh, Canada. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, you know, we're, we're producing um, tons of material and uh, and separating uh, once we're done with all our commissioning, separating heavy and light rare earth. And outside of China right now, there is zero. There's zero separation of heavy rare earth uh, oxides. It, it does not exist. Uh, there's a little bit of light rare earth processing, but it's very small. Again, that 85 to 90 percent of separation is controlled by China. So in, in Canada, yeah, we're actually on the, the cusp of delivering uh, separated heavy and light on the same equipment, uh, which again, it, it's not being done. It's not being done anywhere outside of China at this point. So um, we're really on a, a fast track to deliver uh, what the market needs. And I mean, what I liked about Louisiana, uh, especially, is that you're not just going greenfield, that you're using existing infrastructure and you received some uh, government, local and state uh, support as well um, uh, along the process. Yeah, very good point. I mean, customers at the end of the day and the, the US DOD know who those customers are. If we tried to build a greenfield building, as they say, it would probably add two years to our schedule and, and, and many, 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 many more dollars to get to where we needed to be. So we, uh, we started looking on the Gulf Coast a year ago in uh, April of 22. And um, as we looked in, in Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, we realized the state of Louisiana was quite anxious to have us set up in their state. And we, they, they presented 20 buildings to us that we then uh, did due diligence on. We, we went to every facility by the end of the year, 2022. Uh, we had identified three buildings. And finally, in April uh, on April 6th, we actually announced that Alexandria um, Louisiana in the middle of the state 
had all the right chemical trade. It had uh, the access to shipping ports, uh, not not uh, exposed to weather conditions. A really good economic profile, and uh, so that that saves a lot of time because again we're trying to get the first mover. Let, let's get this done quickly. The uh, the U.S. DoD award actually helps us to move quicker, and we were on a fast track regardless. But yes, and the state stepped up with uh, twenty million dollars in incentives. Uh, those are, uh, you know, uh, payroll rebates and different things. But um, yeah, it, it, it's um, it, it's good because now we not only have commercial development in Canada, but we now have commercial path forward in Louisiana. Yeah, and talking about commercial development, there are some uh, companies out of Australia that are working also in this space um, at an early stage. Is there also uh, some kind of collaboration possible for you further down the road? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our, our, our plan forward is um, we're in discussions currently with, uh, let's say, 14 different uh, rare earth resources that are outside of China. And uh, with each one of those resources, we're, we're discussing when their timeline will be ready uh, to deliver uh, a mineral concentrate, a chemical concentrate that we can then put into our plant in Louisiana, number one. But our, our growth plan forward to, to capture 20% of that uh, $16 billion market that I spoke of is really to have three self-use plants. So three plants that we will build strategically in North America to help make things happen. But as we've engaged with various uh, rare earth companies, Australia, South America, Africa, Canada, uh, we've also realized the opportunity for a joint ventured opportunity. So to continue the growth and get to that 20% marker, some will be self-use and the others will be joint ventured use. And um, so it does make sense, for example, if, if someone in Australia or in Africa or in South America uh, has a project that's got the right, um, the right size and, and structure, that because of our, uh, our, our lower capex approach to our technology, we can set up joint ventured opportunities with in situ mining companies and, and again, get the job done on an ex-China market. Well, I mean, for me as a shareholder, that sounds good that you're then selling your intellectual uh, property um, without uh, needing uh, additional funding. Um, so that sounds like a good way forward. Yeah, absolutely. We, we do have a lot of, uh, you know, this government funding is, is one path forward. There's an add-on opportunity, as I mentioned, beyond just the $4 million, which is a vote of confidence. There are other government opportunities that uh, are on the table and be pursued. And governments are stepping up because they know this is a really crucial uh, thing that needs to get done. Uh, we're also in discussions with customers at the end of the day that are looking at pre-purchase agreements or looking to uh, make investments in processing facilities so that at the end of the day they get a discount to product eventually as our plant starts running but um, it helps to fund the path forward without, uh, without getting into too much equity raising. And debt and equity are certainly opportunities to raise money as well. 